Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. You know, I thought about getting a boroscope for quite some time now, but there are so many out there. And I wasn't even sure if I get all the benefits of owning one. Do I get one of the ones that attaches to a phone? Do I get a standalone model like this one here? Do I spend a small fortune or are the budget friendly ones really that effective? Well, today I think we'll answer a number of those questions by reviewing the budget friendly TD450S Articulating Boroscope by Teslon. Let's go. Let's take a closer look at what comes in the box. Got a nice hard shell zipper case with a handle. Inside we have our boroscope, USB-C charging cable. Got some documents here. We have a return label if we don't like it or if it's defective. We have cleaning wipes to keep the camera clean and we have our user manual. Now this is the boroscope here. This comes with a five foot, yes, it's as tall as my wife, but a five foot cable so we can inspect various areas with a nice little camera. And this one actually has the dual camera. If you look closely here, there's a camera on the end with eight LEDs. We also have a camera on the side with an LED for illuminating things as well. At first glance, it does have a nice solid build. It doesn't feel like any type of cheap parts. Take this off. Everyone loves that. But this is a four and a half inch screen with 1920 by 1080 HD resolution for your photos, which is two megapixel, or 1280 by 720p for recording video. So this is the fun part. This lever here controls the articulation. We get up to 210 degrees of articulation with that camera on the end of the boroscope. This is actually IP67 rated, which means that it's dust proof and it's also submergible in water for a few feet or one meter for 30 minutes. So don't worry, we're gonna actually demonstrate how to use this on various things around the house or the garage. But first, let's take a closer look at how it works. All right, so I've dimmed the lights, but to turn it on, you're going to have to hold the power button down for a couple seconds, and then that will turn on the camera and it is ready to go. So right now we're in picture taking mode. There is a button on the back, a trigger. If I pull that, it'll snap a picture. But I'm gonna put it in video mode. Now I can record video, same button. So now it's recording. It actually captures audio as well. Now we'll stop that. If I push the mode button again, I can review my footage. I've got some up and down arrows here to go through the photos or the video. And then I hit okay if I wanna play it. So let's go back to the modes here. I'm gonna leave it in video mode for now. We have a zoom feature. There's a zoom button on the right here, so you can go 1.3 times or 1.5 times, and then standard. And again, you can hold the camera however you want and record things. We can also adjust the brightness. This will dim the LEDs. So every time I press it, I can have off, full bright, less bright, less bright, off. So there's three different stages. Then we can go in our settings menu and we can choose some of the settings. So our resolution is 1280 by 720 for video, as an example, sound recording, on or off, and then our date stamp. And then I can also pick a number of different settings here, language, temperature. This will display the temperature on screen in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Then we can format our card to a version of software we have and so on. We can also have an automatic shutdown, preset to five or 10 minutes. So a couple more things before the demonstration. Now that it's powered off, you can take your USB-C cable, hook it up here, plug it into your computer to retrieve the files or to charge it, or you can charge it off of a charging block. Any five volt USB connector will do the charging. You have a reset button here, and you also have a micro SD card, 32 gig, that it comes with to save all of your images or video. One more thing, there is a safety manual because I may or may not have been tempted to stick this up my nose or in my ears, which is not recommended. Don't do that. But there is a safety manual here to tell you all about cleaning, maintenance, and care. So give this a quick read as well. Now let's go on to our first garage task. Now I've gone ahead and I pulled out a spark plug out of the classic truck that sits beside me here. This is my 1956 Chevy Cameo. And as you can see, the spark plug has some buildup. You can probably see that with the camera there. I'm not surprised. It's probably about 30 years old or so uh, from when it was last rebuilt. So I'm not that surprised that there's some buildup on there. However, it does indicate that there's probably a little bit of leakage in that cylinder. 
And that's why we're gonna take a closer look. So a couple tips when using this, you don't wanna overly bend the cable. If you saw how it was wrapped up in the container in the box that it came with, you don't really wanna exceed bending it past that. And then also when you're taking it out and putting it away, you wanna make sure that this is straight again and not articulated. So just put the lever here in the middle. Now this does have two cameras. I want access to the side camera and I'll put my finger there so we can see it on the screen. It's on the side camera right now. I pull the trigger in the back for a couple seconds and it'll go to the front camera. And let's say my image is flipped. I can flip it again by pushing the up or down arrow here. And that will flip the image. As I'm navigating it into the spark plug hole here, I wanna keep in mind which way this moves because if I kind of have this angle, it's gonna go up and down. So I just wanna be mindful of that. So it takes some getting used to, but let's just have a look here. So you'll watch the screen. We're going in. And there we go. Let's take a look at the side camera. Hold down two seconds. So that's from the side. You can see the carbon build up in there. So I'm gonna go back to the front camera. So you can see a little bit of build up in a couple different areas. And then I can just twist the camera around to get a better look and I can articulate it. So it takes some getting used to, but just by twisting the cable, I can get a better idea, you know, what's going on there. So we can see some scoring and some build up, but you know, for an older engine, I'm not really that surprised. Now I'm going to demonstrate a Corvette colonoscopy. We're going to inspect the exhaust system. It's brand new. I don't expect to see anything out of the ordinary, but let's take a look through the tailpipe. This has an active valve system. We should be able to see around the corner here. There it is. Looks like it's in good shape as it should be. This is just an example though, if you wanted to look into an exhaust pipe, see if there was a leak, that type of thing. I'm not doing the best camera work, but you get the idea. So if you don't have a hoist, or you don't wanna to have to pull the tire, sometimes checking your brake pad life is a good use for a boroscope. So I can check the rear pads. I know what I'm looking for, but I can see, I can see the pad up against the rotor it's nice and thick and it should look like the front one, which it certainly does. It looks just like that one. So these are new. I know they're good, but it's something that I can keep checking on with a boroscope. So this is a 10 millimeter socket. So you know what I'm talking about without going into much detail. But if you don't, we're always losing these bad boys somewhere in our engine compartments. Now this car here has an under tray, a number of under trays all the way along. Well, this is gonna allow us, if we drop something like that, we can fish down right to the under tray. We can look around, see where we dropped our socket or our tool, and then we can figure out which under tray we may need to loosen off or grab a magnetic stick and pull that sucker out. So let me give you a demonstration how easy it is just to get to the bottom and have a look around. So I'm gonna go right to the floor. That's the floor there. And I can look around with the articulating end, or remember, we can switch to side camera and we can have a look that way. So now I'm on the floor and I can see in this area anyway, there is nothing laying there. So this would be the floor on this side, just the way the camera's sitting and there's nothing there. So I could poke and prod around and try and find other areas. Switch back. And remember we can articulate the end and also look around. So there's the floor again and I don't see anything there. On to the next. Here's a fun one for you. Have you ever dropped something in the seat tracks of your seat in the vehicle? Well, worry no more. Now I can get right in there and try to find anything that I had dropped, especially when you don't have a lot of working room, but you can see not a problem now. Maybe we'll find some French fries. So I think you get the idea for applications within the garage for automotive type things. 
but let's go use this in a household application, starting with our HVAC system. All right, we are standing in my furnace room. I'm just gonna take this inspection cover off and that'll let us see inside. My goal is to get up in this area so I can see how clean that ventilation is. So I got my camera oriented the right way. Now I'm just gonna crawl up over this hump. Almost there. There we go, we're over the hump. Now, I can see just some dust scratches there, but I'm not seeing a lot of buildup. And I'm quite a ways in there. So, looks pretty clean this close to the furnace. So my ductwork is relatively clean, but you can inspect other things like right here. I'm looking at the intake side of the air filter, but I can see that everything looks okay leading up to the filter. So, so this is a pretty handy device if you want to inspect parts of your furnace system. Out of curiosity, I'm just gonna look down this one furnace vent on the second level. So I'm happy that was super clean. Let's take a look down the sink. Well, so far I have to say the dirtiest job around my place is the sink. This can also be used to inspect small things like circuit boards. Maybe you want to see if your phone is dirty inside the charging port. But I love that we can really get in there and have a look. So lots of options and that's the point. So there we go, a number of different things that you can do with a boroscope. I like this as one nice self-contained unit. I don't have to worry about having my phone with me. I don't have to worry about installing an app. Very simple to use, has a three hour or more battery life, and that's with the light on. So I think that's pretty impressive. So this is the Teslong TD450S. They carry a ton of different models. I'll leave a link in the video description below for this one here. But if you like today's review video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.